Welcome back to Guns America Digest. Today I will be testing the ballistics of the 44 Remington New Model Army, otherwise known as the 1858 Remington. This is a brand new stainless steel Pieta. And as you can see, I've already got it ready to go. I'm using, um, I'm going to try a combination of 3F GoX, triple seven Hodgson triple seven and round balls with the GoX as well just to show you the differences um, and I'm using paper cartridges these are the the um, about 220 grain Johnson and Dow bullet um, on top of a paper cartridge made of um, cigarette rolling papers using the cartridge kits at cartridgekits.com um, that work really well and there's, I have videos on all of this stuff. They also sponsor this series, and um, they work really good. So I'm using this new model army, and as you can see, these are pretty full snot loads. They're only about, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch, not quite. Um, yeah, I'd say about a sixteenth of an inch or a little bit more. Um, 3.30 seconds or something from the rim of the cylinder. So they're pretty tippy top. They're not absolutely as tippy top as you could get, but they are pretty tippy top. All right. I'm using RWS 1075 caps as they are probably the most consistent that are, that are available out there. Note also that the Johnson & Dow bullet does not quite fit the loading gate of most of these Pietas. When you put them here, they don't clear the gate. They don't clear the loading lever here. Um, so I tap them in a little bit with a brass tapping tool just to get them started so that they clear the gate so that I can use my loading lever. 850. Not bad. Now I'm going to switch to Hodgdon triple seven. And the cylinders are topped up about the same height because these are actually the same. Um, it's the exact same cartridge kits I'm using, of course. And I use the dipper, the dipper about exactly the same as well. So let's give it a shot. Nine sixty. Nine ninety. Nine thirty-three. Now I'm switching to round balls, and as you can see, these are pretty tippy top in the top of this revolver. These are special paper cartridges that I use the the whole dipper, actually a little more than the dipper. I, I showed in my paper cartridge video how to make these so long like this, because when you do, you you have essentially a, a, a right tippy top load for for balls and they are not a round to be trifled with. These are about 145 grains, um, four or five one swaged round balls. As you can see they're pretty, pretty plucky. 954. 1042. 955 1049 1013 So that is the ballistics of the 44. The um the the Remington is a little bit longer barrel than the Colt. So you're going to have a little bit difference in the, the 1860 or 1851 Navy. Remember that the 1851 Navy does not handle conicals very well. You really have to use a cylinder loader or a, um, or a um, you know, like the tapping rod. The tapping rod is, is really kind of difficult um, if you're going to be shooting a lot. But it's worth it. You know, if you're going to carry them and, and that's all you got and you want uh, something that's got more heft to it, um, the conicals definitely, especially with the Hodgson Triple Seven, they really rock. Um, but you know, good old round balls when you fill them right up and you top them off, 
you've got a nasty, you know, a nasty round better than 38 special. So you're talking about a you're talking about a round that's more like a 40 Smith and Wesson than it is like a um, like a 38 special. The problem is, is you you know you've got your the weight the weight problem of the round ball being round is that it can only be 145 grains. So you're not really testing what it can do. But but with a conical using triple seven, then you know you've got a 220 gain bullet going a thousand feet per second almost sometimes better than a thousand feet per second and because those weren't totally topped off but uh you know these are nasty they, they're nasty bullets they're nasty rounds they're this is a great self-defense gun period i don't care what anyone says um you are dealing with 19th century technology so we're going to get into how you make it so that your caps don't bind as badly i already spoke um in previous articles about the cylinder about keeping the cylinder gap clean with triple seven, you really don't have to worry about it. Even with um, black powder, I shot quite a lot of black powder through this gun earlier. The first, the first rounds that I put through it, um, this whole patch was full actually, plus uh, plus a, a two rounds of this, I think, two rolls of that. So, um, but with the triple seven, you really don't have to worry about it whatsoever because the triple seven doesn't crud up. So. Um, you know, you are dealing with old technology. It's not perfect, and we'll go we'll go over some of the things later that 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 will make these guns much more reliable than just out of the box the way this gun is. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time.